Thank you for joining us. Our guest today is Congressman Ted Deutsch, representing Florida's 22nd District. He is now serving as chairman for the Subcommittee on the Middle East and North Africa and Global Counterterrorism on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Also as a senior member on the House Judiciary Committee. In addition, at the start of the 117th Congress, Democratic leaders have selected Congressman Deutsch to chair the House Ethics Committee for the second term. He's also in a leadership role of the House Bipartisan Task Force for Combating Anti-Semitism and the Inter-Parliamentary Task Force Fighting Online Anti-Semitism. We'll have more later in this program and right now Congressman Ted Deutsch will join us following these messages. Life Extension Magazine brings you new discoveries in health and anti-aging. Our science-based research and supplements are so advanced, they're many years ahead of the medical mainstream with quality control standards that exceed FDA mandates. Life Extension has covered groundbreaking medical research for more than 35 years. For your health and future, you deserve the best. Learn more at lifeextension.com. Joining us now is Congressman Ted Deutsch. Sir, it's an honor to have you back on the show. Great to be with you. Crazy times we're experiencing with this pandemic and economic crisis and all the upheavals. And it's good to have rational people like you, sir, serving to implement intelligent, inspiring and positive solutions for everyone concerned. For example, please tell us about the American Rescue Plan. Sure, the American Rescue Plan is, uh, is a bold step forward to help address the remaining challenges of the pandemic, to help crush the virus, to get people vaccinated, uh, to provide relief to people who uh, are suffering economically, uh, and to help chart the course toward a, a brighter future for our country. And, uh, and it's thus far been successful. We've seen the number of vaccinations increase dramatically, uh, checks are getting out to people, uh, foreclosures and, and um, evictions uh, have been stopped. So we've seen, us turn, we've seen America start to turn the corner. The jobs numbers look good. People are getting vaccinated. We're heading in the right direction. This is the, the big step toward helping us accomplish that. Whereas you and I both agree on caring about the entire globe and everything and the environment, this is the Shalom Show. And of course, that is a prime interest of our Judeo-Christian audience. Tell us about your leadership role with regard to combating anti-Semitism. Uh, sure, well, I appreciate the question. Uh, I am the founding uh, co-chair of the bipartisan task force to combat anti-Semitism. Uh, I serve on the Europe subcommittee and I chair the Middle East subcommittee. And, and through all of these positions, uh, I have a, a real focus on combating anti-Semitism and, and, and it's anti-Semitism that we see in our own country. Uh, on the far right, you saw this on January 6th, people literally wearing their anti-Semitism on their clothes uh, when they stormed the Capitol. You see it on the radical left. Uh, and the same thing is true globally, where we've got to confront anti-Semitism wherever it is, wherever it comes from. Uh, and we have to be willing to call it out. We, we, cannot, we cannot only focus on anti-Semitism when it comes from one side or the other. Uh, we've got to focus on it always. That's how we combat it. The last thing I'll say about this is uh, the president of the United States will soon be appointing for the first time uh, an ambassador to combat anti-Semitism. Uh, we help to elevate this from special envoy to ambassador. That person will work closely with Congress uh, as we work to fight anti-Semitism around the world. Uh, and confront those who single out Israel uh, and, and, and attack Israel's very right to exist. Uh, there's a lot for us to do, sadly, but we're very focused on the task. 
and of course combating racism in general worldwide, wherever it may be. But this is the Shalom Show, and again, I must ask you, sir, the most historic peace accords were just signed between Israel, the UAE, and Bahrain at the White House, 42 years after the historic peace treaty was signed between Israel and Egypt with President Carter, President Sadat, and Prime Minister Begin. And now we have these new historic peace accords, which are very promising. What are your views with regard to the peace progress being made in the Middle East at the present time? Well, it's incredibly exciting. The Abraham Accords, the normalization with, uh, between Israel and, and countries in the Arab world uh, means only good things for the future of the region. Uh, it's very encouraging for a, a stronger and, and more secure Israel. And ultimately, it's, it's really good news for the United States. So at this point, the steps that we've seen with, uh, with the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain and, and Morocco uh, in particular, and, and the possibility of expanding the countries uh, in these accords even further uh, is something that I think we should all feel good about and work to achieve. As again, as the, the chairman of the Middle East Subcommittee, this is a real focus and a priority of mine because of what it will mean, not just for Israel and the U.S.-Israel relationship, but for uh, our relationship with the entire region and for Israel's relationship with the Arab world. Another question our audience would like to hear your thoughts on with regard to the continuing friendship with the USA and Israel. And of course, will the Biden administration continue in a positive direction for Israel and not undo the historic recent events, including finally moving the US embassy to Jerusalem, recognizing the sovereignty of the Golan Heights, and in fact continue, hopefully, in a positive direction? What are your thoughts on that? Oh, sure. I've, and I've had lots of conversations with uh, the new administration already about, about the plans just to, as, I, as we just were talking about, to, to continue to expand normalization. Uh, also, uh, to, to make sure that we're building upon what's already been done. The embassy is in Jerusalem, something that I've advocated for for years. And, and uh, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. The administration uh, acknowledges that and that the embassy will stay there. But also, there are things that can be done to, to build upon the strategic relationship between the United States and Israel, uh, and also legislation that I was proud to pass that, uh, that uh, the former president, President Trump, signed into law that will strengthen the relationship uh, even beyond security assistance to all of the ways that, that we can work together to benefit one another through humanitarian relief and focusing on technology and focusing on agriculture and water, all of the ways where we can learn from one another, we can uh, teach one another, uh, and we'll have a stronger relationship. Uh, America and Israel uh, are allies, not just because of Israel's place in the world, but because of our shared values. And that's what we're going to build upon. And I have uh, every confidence that the Biden administration will, will absolutely recognize that and continue to build and look for ways to strengthen that relationship. And of course, that's essential. So much more can be achieved with peace and cooperation, solving the world's problems environmentally and other. In fact, one of my main interests in life is that of the environment. And of course, you share that concern. What are your thoughts with regard to living in harmony with nature rather than at its expense? We all share the same planet and, uh, and there is only one earth. And uh, our, our relationship with the planet affects our relationship with, uh, with one another and with people all around the world. Um, we've got to work together to combat climate change uh, we've got to do that, not just because we have to, to maintain the beauty of our, our planet, uh, but we have to do it because it impacts our national security and it impacts, uh, it impacts what happens around the world. Those of us who live in Florida are experiencing, have experienced more intense hurricanes. Uh, people all around the country are experiencing greater natural disasters. Uh, we've seen the same thing around the world. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm so glad that the United States is taking a leadership role in the world again in combating climate change. It's something that I try to do as a member of Congress. Uh, and it's, it's something that I think if we work together, uh, we're going to be able to confront climate change 
uh, and take action that will lead to a, a safer and, and ultimately a more prosperous world for everyone. Before we conclude this interview, sir, share a final thought with our audience at this time. Well, uh, this has been a, um, uh, it's been a, a really challenging, re incredibly difficult year for so many we've experienced uh, we've experienced loss, the, the loss of, of friends and neighbors and relatives. Uh, we've, we've been inside uh, having to, to have holidays uh, virtually instead of in person, the, the difficulty of, of being separated and, and isolated and, and alone. Uh, and, uh, and what's been so remarkable is the way that people have worked to lift up one another and to be there for one another and to offer support as best we can. And as we come through this and things start to go, go back a little more toward the way they were before the pandemic, I hope that we can remember what we what we learned as we saw people stand up for our first responders and be there for our frontline workers and, and that we can continue to support one another, strengthen one another, uh, and go forward together to build a, a stronger and, and safer and more vibrant community for everybody. Absolutely. Thank you so very much, sir. A real pleasure having you back on this show. Always my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. I join Israel's many friends around the world in celebrating Israel's 73rd Independence Day. On this birthday of our national freedom, we can take immense pride in Israel's enormous successes. And this has undoubtedly been true over the past year. Today Israel is leading the world in vaccinating our people against Corona, and we are defeating the pandemic. This Independence Day, Israelis will once again be celebrating together with family and friends. Many restrictions that we were compelled to impose last year have been lifted. Life is returning to normal. The economy is growing again. Restaurants and cafes are open for business. Schools are up and running. Culture and sports events are back. My friends, our success is the world's success. For Israel is an example to all countries that through mass vaccinations, there's a way out of this terrible pandemic. But there's still more good news. Since the last Independence Day, Israel has forged four new peace agreements with Arab countries, with the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Morocco, and Sudan. We're building a better future for the Middle East in which the fruits of trade and cooperation will bring countless tangible benefits to all our peoples. And this is already happening. I have no doubt that additional Arab and Muslim countries will join the ever-growing circle of peace. For all these reasons, and for much more, we can unite in celebrating Israel's many achievements. Chag Atzmaut Sameach, Happy Independence Day, Israel. For 72 years, you've heard our story. Tiny country, surrounded by enemies, surviving against all odds. You know the names of our wars, our battles, our planes, our tanks, our tech. You think you understand our success? You know nothing. Let me tell you a secret. The key to our existence is not our weapons. It's our soldiers. Our spirit. Our passion. Our love. We are an army of the people. Jews, Druze, Muslims, Christians. We are defending our homes. We are protecting our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers, our neighbors, our friends. Where there's no road, we pave one. No bridge, we build one. No answer, we find one. For us, no distance is too far, no ocean too vast, no mission too complicated. We get the job done. When our new soldiers are sworn in, they pledge, if necessary, to sacrifice their lives for Israel. All of us, in blue, in green, in white, in beige, generals and privates, active duty and reserves, we're ready to take any risk to ensure the survival of Israel. It's an honor to have this mission today. We stand on the shoulders of giants who came before us. 
and men and women who started with nothing and built a powerful army that is feared by its enemies and respected by its peers. We're proud to have given new life to the Jewish people, security to all of Israel's citizens, and confidence that our best days are ahead of us. We are the Israel Defense Forces. Now you know our secret. Happy Independence Day. Joining us now again is Mark Goldman. Mark, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. We just saw this beautiful tribute to Israel's Independence Day by the IDF. Such a powerful message. In fact, it just says it all. What does it mean to you as an American Jew and what should it mean to all good people, Christian or Gentile, friends of Israel and other who see this? I think that there's a very, very deep message in, in that video. And the first part of it speaks to the love of the people for their land, for their homes. So they are willing to stand and defend it because they know that Israel is the place where civilization truly started, where the idea that there's one God and a clear set of rules, right and wrong, Israel represents all of that. So every civilized country that we call civilized is um, based on that fundamental principle. And so Israelis recognize how important the land is to, to them, in addition to, of course, all of the horrific things that have happened over the millennia to Jews all over the world. So to have a homeland is critical and the soldiers recognize it. But the importance is, and the distinction that's happening in America, unfortunately, is there the, the children are being taught the importance and the goodness of Israel. Here, the other side seems to be teaching our children that America is a racist place and all kind of false narratives to bring down America. So that's important that people believe in their country and recognize how great it is. With all of the fragmentation taking place in society nowadays, with so many uh, people in this country, the United States, in fact, never having visited Israel, including a large percentage of Jewish people, in fact, as well, how do you explain this lack of unity of recognition of true facts, the message that we just saw from the IDF? Well, that message, again, is clear and uh, very moving. And again, it speaks to the importance, what they said, the secret is the people. The people believe in the country, that's great. And in America, we have to believe in, a, in, in our country because freedom that exists anywhere in the world is only there because America was willing to stand up for it. In the first part of our program today, we had Congressman Ted Deutsch updating us on his thoughts and views at this time in history. What would your comments be with regard to his update? Yes, I, I watched uh, Congressman Deutsch's uh, uh, comments, and I must say that when I look so often at what all of the Democrats seem to say, what they say and what they do are completely unrelated. For example, he was talking about the COVID relief bill, the American uh, Rescue Plan, but that was all put forth as a COVID relief package. And if I understand it right, less than 9% of the money goes for COVID relief. And the balance for the most part seems to be being used to bail out states who have wasted money, who have spent ridiculous amounts. So they're taking money from people who live in like Florida, where the government has been watching the spending and everything else and giving it to states like New York and, and Illinois and California who have just spent money beyond and have debts beyond uh, any ability to pay. And, that, and they did that agenda hiding it under COVID relief. 
Many people would find much of his message very reassuring with regard to his position on Israel. What are your thoughts? I, uh, again, I've seen every Democrat say whatever the right thing to say that the audience wants to hear, but the actions are uh, invariably completely different. I mean, one of the obviously more famous examples is, and every single Democrat said it, if you like your plan, you can keep your plan. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. I mean, it was a flat out in our face lie. And, but they thought everybody wanted to hear it and they were right. So they kept saying it. So here, when you look at what the Democrats have done to Israel, starting with Obama, and then the whole squad, which is leading the Democrats is so anti-Israel and accusing Israel of so many different things. And I haven't seen any of the Democrats go after them to say, you know, that it's not good. That, I mean, no censuring, no nothing is happening. When you look at what Republicans do on that, it's a completely different thing. At least it's open for discussion. Here, there's no holding to account. So yeah, they're, they're saying they're He's in favor of Israel, but he's also partnering with Rashida Tlaib and AOC and the rest of them that are, can't wait to get rid of Israel. And the fact that they are going enthusiastically engaging with Iran again, I mean, clearly Iran is clear as anything that their intention is to destroy Israel and to destroy America. So what objective, what purpose is there in saying, oh, let's go back into this nuclear deal that would eventually let them have nuclear weapons? I don't understand it. It makes absolutely zero sense. What are your thoughts with regard to the needs of Israel and the United States as far as strengthening and continuing their mutual friendship? Well, it would be a great thing for the world. And as we've, you know, America, the foundation of America is one nation under God, which means that there's clear rules and those rules start with the 10 commandments. And so when we believe in that and agree on all agreeing on what's right and wrong, we have that connection and that's what it all means. What I'm seeing the other side doing is they are saying none of those things count. Only my feelings count. I could decide today if I'm going to be a boy or a girl. I can decide today whatever I decide. Think about it. Their entire platform of the Democrats is they've crossed off the commandment that says thou shalt not covet. All they do is covet that you don't deserve what you have. No one deserves what they have. They're entitled to take it away from you and give it out to whoever they think should get it. I mean, this is part of what we're dealing with. And it makes no sense if we're going to keep America. Well, whereas Congressman Deutsch is very optimistic and positive, what positive thought would you have with regard to a better future for all concerned? I, on the one hand, when I look at the various actions that the Democrats are taking now that they have the kind of control that they have in the House and the Senate and the presidency, they have taken one step after another to bring down America, whether it's leaving the border open, whether it's shutting down the pipeline. The list is so long of the actions that have been taken, which are only designed to damage America. I cannot think of one which, is, which has any positive effect on America. Well, always trying to find common denominators and positives. What are your thoughts with regard to the first responders who are combating this incredible time in history, Mark? I think it is so important that we support our first responders going from police and firemen who are really putting their lives on the line to obviously nurses and doctors and others who are dealing with this aspect of it. But 
the thing I, I think is so important, law and order is so important, and it's not going to happen unless we have uh, police there keeping uh, law and order. And I see the Democrats continuing to encourage defunding the police and rioting everywhere and destroying so much of American history and other things and federal buildings. And I don't understand how they can say that they support our first responders when, on the other hand, they ignore them or, or threaten them or do all kinds of negative things to them. Mark, this is all very interesting and so good to have varying viewpoints. Before we conclude, I'd like to ask you, I've heard many people are saying, many of your admirers nationwide are wondering why on earth you aren't running for office. What is the truth with regard to that? Are you, do you have such plans? I, I don't have plans for that. I, I'm very happy that we have Senator Rubio and Senator Scott representing Florida. I think they're excellent people and they get the difference between right and wrong. So I'm not looking to uh, replace any of them. And I am supporting those candidates who want to make other changes, both uh, in the state of Florida and elsewhere, because if we look at the destruction that's being brought on America. We have to work to make the best happen, but thank you for having me and hope be well. Well, being an optimist myself and the name of this show being Shalom, which means peace, all we can do is engage individuals with different viewpoints and hope that somehow, God willing, things will work out for the best, even in this insane time of pandemic and economic crisis. It's always an honor and pleasure to have you on the show, Mark, and let's hope for the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This brings us to the end of our special show for today, and on behalf of us here at the Shalom Show, thank you for joining us. Mm-hmm.